Here. James? Here. Maxwell? Here. Quisenberry? Here. Gonzalez? Here. Schwartz? Here. A quick note, I was just told so everybody knows that our microphones are now voice activated. Is that a feature that nobody read the instructions on, or is it just no, a new additive? No, we've added enough microphones for every. That way, uh, no one will be grabbing them and breaking them. How, how many people can talk at the same time? Eight. What happens when nine people start Whole talking? Thing shuts down, goes up and Just checking. <laughs> Burns up. There's only seven That's members of this. <laughs> only seven in this committee, so yeah, we're. Okay, we need uh, approval Overload. of minutes. Move approval of minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Minutes carry. Now we need approval of agenda, addenda. I move the, the approval of the agenda and the addenda. Okay. Rachel seconds it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> okay. Public participation. Anybody out in the public wishing to speak? Good. Communications. I really don't have any, uh, unless anybody else here on the committee does. Deb, anything? The only thing I'd like to say is I appreciate everybody coming out that uh, came out to do the tour. I know some of you have already seen it, but uh, it was very interesting, and uh, I want to thank the public officials that were there to greet us and not supply us with any coffee. Thanks for the tour. <laughs> now we have the facilities director report, so I'm going to turn that over to Dana, Mr. Brenner, and allow him to go through the list for us. Uh, it's short, but I uh, wanted to at least co recover uh, with you the that one's apparently not voice acting. You got to push it once. Uh, so, so last month uh, we sent out a directive to you that said basically we were postponing. Um, uh, for all good intentions and good purposes, uh, the start of the cleaning process as well as the uh, waterproofing at the courthouse. Um, right after the meeting, uh, IGW sent us uh, product uh, design documentation, uh, just telling us briefly, uh, you know, what are the best uh, degree temperature, how should the product be used, et cetera. And uh, once we Product is best served in uh, 50 degrees uh, weather. Knowing what November's average in Champaign and December's average is in Champaign, uh, we determine alt until uh, uh, the weather determines it in the spring. Uh, also allow us to come back and hopefully do. I'm skipping ahead here, but they are tied together. It'll it'll help us out with a lighting project uh, at the courthouse, replacing the exterior uh, lights on the tower clock tower as well as the interior uh, clock face lights uh, with LED fixtures. Um, I met today with, uh, with Bruce. Uh, spent a good deal of time talking to him, but w our goal is that hopefully sometime this month we'll have uh, uh, fixtures in to take a look at. Uh, we'll allow Bruce and, and, and other folks uh, from his committee to, uh, actually light them up. Uh, it's important that, uh, you know, the. Uh, the lighting is not too different, but yet at the same time being uh, being green, using a lot less uh, uh, utilities uh, with those type of fixtures. Um, so hopefully we can uh, combine that, purchase the fixtures uh, once we determine if these are the ones we actually want and need, uh, and uh, kind of dovetail both of these together so we can take advantage of the lifts that will be utilized in the courthouse project uh, come this uh, spring. Uh, through probably uh, that's courthouse update uh, and, and lighting clock. Uh, Elias, yes, sir, question. Yeah, just a quick question. As we start using 
LED fixtures. Um, do we have any mechanism to kind of track their lifetime? Because we're anticipating to get a much longer life out of an LED bulb, right? Well, hopefully, yes. So, yeah. um, the, do you reportedly have, they're eight to ten years versus a yeah, a but one, you, you never know, months. right? You get That's you, right. you got to see uh, um, when he's when we switched over to the um, the CFC bulbs. You know, I bought a bunch of them, put them in my house, and I didn't pay any attention to how long they lasted. So they seemed to last a little longer, but I didn't pay any attention. The whole the whole um, premise of how much money they will save is based on their their optimum life and and how much power they use. I'd like us to keep a little bit of track so we can crow about the success if it's good, and if it's not so good, we can go back and harass the manufacturers if they if they don't meet it. <coughs> Mm -hmm. I would think that that would be very easy uh, uh, to do since we're only replacing a few fixtures. Um, you know, looking at the utility savings may be a little bit more difficult. Uh, again, it's only a few fixtures uh, in a very large uh, footprint of, uh, of a building structure. Uh, and this next year, be able to start tracking our utilities per building. And, and, and so once we build a track record there, we'll be able to do some comparison analysis. Yeah. I would assume the clock tower is the place you want to change the bulbs the least. Yeah. Yes. So that might be yes. worth looking at. Yes, mm -hmm. no question. Uh, the Elias uh, uh, building is best us. Uh, we, uh, we, I'm sorry. Go could, ahead, Jerry. Could I have a question? Uh, some time ago, we did talk about using LEDs up there on the clock tower. And at that time, uh, I think that we weren't sure that we would get the kind of intensity we need to illuminate that. Are we talking about the same situation? Yes, that's, that's why we want the actual uh, fixtures that have been recommended. I'd like to get one each here uh, so that we can actually do a test and also put a light meter on it. And that way we have a good comparison uh, between what we actually have now and, and what's being proposed. Sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Any other questions? Sorry. That's okay. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, the, the Elias building, uh, we are in the process still. Uh, I think Kirk reported at the last meeting we'd gotten, we'd gotten at least one or maybe two um, uh, price estimates in on determining the amounts of asbestos uh, in the Elias building, uh, getting ready for the demolition um, uh, to, uh, to happen uh, next year sometime. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, we tried to get a third. It came in, and it was exceedingly low, uh, as if maybe it was inaccurate. Uh, so we went out to get a third one. I'm hoping that it got emailed to us uh, late this afternoon. Uh, Kirk talked to the gentleman uh, this morning. Um, but we'll go, hopefully, in the next week, uh, determine uh, who, who best to do our testing of that building. Um, the test itself will take basically a day. They'll come in and test about 15 different areas. Uh, in the facility. Uh, it'll take seven to ten days uh, of a turnaround time at the lab. So so hopefully in about two, two and a half weeks we should have the documentation uh, back identifying uh, what areas, uh, if any, and I'm sure there is, uh, have asbestos. And we'll turn that over to IGW who's putting together uh, the documents uh, to go out to bid for uh, teardown of, uh, of part of the facility. So. Any questions? Okay. Uh, county parking lots, I, I threw up there just the informational purpose. Uh, we're looking at uh, Jeff Blue and uh, one of his engineers uh, was very uh, kind and, and uh, went through uh, the two parking lots here at Brookins uh, as well as the, uh, I call it the Jiffy Lube lot and I, and I don't know what the name of the actual dealership is uh, uh, adjacent to courthouse, but we've got about, I think, 15 to, to 20 parking spots back there, and, and that lot uh, is in just horrible condition. Uh, our lots here actually are not bad, uh, but some do need a little bit of work. Um, so uh, his engineer has uh, gone out and kind of laid out some information, and they're putting together some pricing for us that will be helpful as we look to try and do some work in those lots. Uh, the asphalt folks are shut down for the year, as most of you probably know. Uh, but when warmer weather hits in the spring, um, hopefully we can come back and and, uh, and get some pricing from them maybe during the winter and uh, and then talk to Deb and, and others and see what we can do within uh, the confines of, uh, of this budget. Uh, but several of the lots are in 
in a state where they need some attention. Certainly, they need to be uh, uh, recoded, uh, not re-asphalted, just recoded. Uh, some areas uh, in some of the lots need a little bit of, uh, of asphalt uh, patch and repair. Uh, a couple areas in the Brookins lot need a little bit more than that, but uh, um, we need to get on it in, uh, in the course of this next year. Uh, if we wait too much longer, uh, bad things will start happening problem to deal with uh, in the near future so thank you any questions moving on open discussion I, I, I threw that down there if you guys had any questions <clears throat> knowing I, I've been here all of a month and uh, I still haven't been through two jails yet the juvenile detention center and, uh, and the satellite facility um, was going to get to that this week, but uh, uh, Lieutenant Cravens got a little busy, so uh, we're going to postpone that the next week. Um, been through most of our facilities. I'm, I'm setting up uh, uh, meetings with our department heads, uh, folks who are in control of uh, whether parts of buildings or, or entire facilities. Some places like uh, Ileus, it's, it's going to be three people. Uh, EOC is probably uh, three or four people over there. Um, but my intention by doing this is to meet with them once a month in some months. It may be a five-minute meeting and a cup of coffee, or it could be a half-hour meeting. Uh, but I'll be there on site uh, walking through with them, uh, talking to them about what their needs are, uh, what they see within the building, is everything functioning correctly, um, and it's, it's just to start a, a nice dialogue, but uh, it's a way to walk around and, and, and find out. They're in the building all the time. They live in it. Uh, I'm there as, as, a, as a guest and, and viewer, if you will. Uh, so they're a little more uh, intimate with their, with their facility and, and have a, you know, a good knowledge base to, to work with. So uh, that's kind of my intention of how I'm going to proceed. Anybody have any comments they'd like to throw out or any suggestions? If not, I, I had a few, and some of them are going to follow up on Quisenberry because I did talk with Mr. Reinhardt before he left, and uh, the question about tracking stuff is something that uh, I had spoke to him about, and one thing that I was in hopes that we could probably accomplish someday is each building we have has its own unique circumstances, equipment, what have you, uh, whether it be the parking lot, the trees, the roof, what, whatever we do, but whenever we upgrade stuff like we have in here, like with the lighting, painting, uh, ceiling tiles, carpet, all that should be kept in a log for this building and then tied into a master log somewhere so that when we all sit around and a lot of us will be gone, like with this courthouse lighting, I'll probably be gone by the time it's all finally installed and working, but someone can look back and say, oh yeah, that was installed in 2013 and it only lasted three years. So now what are we gonna do and how do we go about it? Uh, Carpeting and I was when we were just over at the new building that building's pushing three years old And I was asking about turn around on the painting over there because you want to keep up with that stuff If you let it go too far Then you have people come in and you have a lot of extra work that adds to your cost to get it done and My mindset on that was we had talked at one time and having a, a minority uh, firm listing of people that we could pull on if the amount was under 30,000 without going out for contract and then they could come in if qualified and had already been screened and do the work instead of going through the whole process. So there's a lot of things like that that would keep the ball rolling and keep our buildings updated as need be. Uh, as we all know, uh, and I'm going to speak here for a little bit, is like Brookings, when I came on board, this roof out here had never been painted or done or anything done to it for some time. So then when they finally got the funds to do it and they tore into it to get it done, uh, there was a little bit more than what anybody expected, and there's probably still more that could have been done. Uh, these are things that if I, I can't say it's strong enough and hard enough, it's like our vehicles, our homes, or anything. Uh, you got to keep things up. No, you don't got to be working on them every year, but you got to have some sort of plan and turnaround, uh, door locks, hinges, all types of, uh, of things that many blinds, things that just need to be looked at and kept up so the cost later isn't that great. And then I do want to say that Mr. Beckett, when I was on his facility committee with John Jay and some others that may be in here, probably be some papers or old minutes. But he did something which I thought was commendable. He met with every department head or had them supply a wish list, and that's exactly what it was as far as space needs, upgrades they needed, things they need that we don't normally see. 
but they deal with it every day and things that would help them perform their jobs better. And that should be building by building. But hopefully down the road, someone like Dana or whoever down the road is in that position could look and say, well, you know, they've done this, they've upgraded this, and it didn't work the way they thought, so let's try this other avenue. And uh, I know Dana and I have talked briefly, and, and I pointed out I've been on other committees, other boards. What he's worried about was the building structure, uh, the upkeep, the trees, which people tend to forget about, which are near. And I was just talking to a minister this morning that runs a Nazarene church in Rantoul and brought up about their uh, stonework on their churches, uh, limestone from Indiana, and it's so porous now because they haven't kept up with it. They had a contractor come in, and the water is seeping through the limestone in through the wall, and their paint and drywall and everything on the inside is just bubbling and popping. So they had to get it done now. We're in the middle of winter time. They've had a contractor out there doing it. Uh, and then they have a basement underneath that years ago and everything settled. I mean, it's just settled. It's probably been there 30, 40 years. Uh, they, they've now retrenched it. They're putting in new uh, gravel, new piping. And he said, we have to do it or we'll lose the building. And it's a beautiful building. And that's one of the things that when we sit here and talk, uh, when we talk about seal coating, uh, mortar joints, even though you do it maybe this year, you still got to be on top of it and you have to check it. And at least every five years really have it checked or seven. Uh, there's no guarantee with anything in life. We all wish there was. but And I think Dana's going to do uh, the structure that we need to get a lot of this in place. It's not going to happen in six months, probably not even a year, but I would think within two to three years, we would have a plan that is well suited for all our buildings and staff. That's the go. Any comments on my comments? Apparently not. Anything else? Any other business? If anybody, as the weather warms up and there's any other tours of any buildings that uh, we would like to take, or if Dana has something that, as he marches along and sees what's going on, that he would like to take us out in the field and look at, I would appreciate it, and we would notice it and do so as we did tonight. I think I've always said when you're on a committee, it's best to get out and also see what we're talking about. We may not understand it all in depth, but at least we can see firsthand what we're talking about. Dana, you have anything else on that? Obviously, seeing several other facilities as this committee, that's something that they would like to see that uh, that they haven't, or I throw that out as a, as an option. I would just say, you know, the this tour this evening was great. It's a new facility. Maybe we should go look at something that's not not so new that needs a lot of attention next. I mean, I, I hear a lot about Brookings, and um, maybe we should just wander around Brookings one evening. We can do that. Okay, well. Anybody else? Okay. Well, moving right along then, that was other business. Chair's report, uh, future meeting will be Tuesday, January the 7th, right here in this room in 2014. So set your calendars up. 6.30, new meeting time. Of course, that'll be on your notice. And the next item is designation of items to be placed on the consent agenda. There are in none. So we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and declare this meeting adjourned.